Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. This is the 3rd of June 2014. As you could tell, uh, I'm in a different setting. This is going to be the video blog of the day. It's a special video blog. And so I chose to do it here. Um, and it'll be short, but it's important. So let's go over this. Uh, as long as I remember, I've been studying life and what's, what goes on with it and why I, as a human being, am experiencing life the way I experience it. And why the people around me experience the, the things they do. I remember being really young and seeing soldiers in my country mistreat citizens. I remember being um, <clears throat> at a party in my country and um, somebody ran upstairs and banged on the door and like really um, aggressively and everybody just kind of got nervous. They opened the door and they were like, uh, it, it was one of my cousins and he was like, he was whispering, but out loud, he said, the soldiers are coming upstairs, soldiers are coming upstairs, and everybody covered their, you know, the women had covered their um, hair, and men separated in one room, women separated in another room, they turned down the music, they turned down the lights, there could be no music, there could be no dancing, men and women could not be in the same house, and then soldiers walked in with guns, and they literally would just walk through the house, and the children, I mean, they could do whatever the fuck they wanted to do. They walked through the house, they kind of looked at everybody, they talked to some people, and they left. And these things didn't really make sense to me. <clears throat> um, my cousin, his hand um, blew up on a grenade because there was a grenade found in the, um, in the alleyway. He was young. And they were throwing the grenade back and forth, not knowing what's a grenade, and it blew up. And I remember visiting him in the hospital, and he was missing his fingers. And they were telling me that they're going to reattach it. So this is, we're talking about a four-year-old at this point, experiencing life like that. Then going through life, I'm not going to give you my whole life story, but I'm going to tell you that there was moments where I saw... Uh, my family members uh, talk about money and not having enough money or issues with money. I saw relationships of men and women break up and husbands and wives break up and boyfriend and girlfriends cheat on each other and nothing, it, it just, it just seemed to nothing, nothing seemed to make sense at all. So I wanted to make sense out of the world. So that's why I study as hard as I do. That's why you watch my video blog because a lot of truths I've come across. However, the reason I'm making this video is because recently there's been an enormous change in myself and a giant shift in my way of thinking. <clears throat> so it was such, it's been such an enormous uh, shift that I actually literally feel like a brand new person. So I'm making this video so that you know, probably I would say in the last four video blogs, uh, four or five video blogs, the mood and the tone and the teachings have been a little bit different. Because the change happened about a week ago. I've just been trying to see if it's... Hey. I've just been trying to see if it's going to stabilize. Or not. Those are my dogs. They just kind of jumped at each other. And it has. Okay. So we have to make sure that... Um, what I want to tell you is... Up until about four video blogs ago. Just go down my list. You'll see. Everything that you've ever heard from me and studied from me. Of course is valid. Because you've been getting results. And one of the things I learned uh, when I was uh, studying L. Ron Hubbard is that authority belongs to the people who can do the job, not people with the certificates, not people who experts say can do, uh, should you should listen to, but people that can do the job are the authority, right? And you check for results. So I know that, I don't know how many, I mean, definitely the hundreds, maybe thousands of people's lives have changed by watching these video blogs from all kinds of issues they've had, even though... That was really never the purpose. It was just me getting on video and just speaking some of the truths I know. So it doesn't invalidate all of your gains and your successes because it's still valid. The knowledge is still true and it still works. However, moving forward, it's a brand new level of knowledge. And in my own personal experience, it's the most powerful knowledge that I've ever come across. And my life is completely different. I'm completely different. And uh, this is why I'm making this video so that you understand. Okay, that the, the this is a brand new Arashti Bazaar, and I like this guy way better. Okay, and it doesn't mean there won't be other changes, but one of the things that I've learned is that you have to let people know when you're going through the change, because then people are expecting the same old you, and it's not it's not the same old Arash. Okay, so what's changed? Well, fuck, I'm still powerful. I'm still sharp. Everything is multiplied. Um, it's just a new level of knowledge. Okay, and it's more freeing. It's more powerful, okay? So, uh, now that we've heard my story, I have some minutes left. Let me give you a teaching. 
in a relationship, whether it's a friend or a friend or a boyfriend, girlfriend or husband and wife or your employee, employer, what you need to look for is you have two people, you need to look to see if these people's values match. So you, I want you to think about, I want you to think about your, sh hey, enough. I want you to think about if your values match another person's values. So an example I came up with was like this. Let's say we got two people and they're hanging out all the time and they, they play pool together and they bowl together and they, they drink together, they watch fucking boxing together, they're having a great time. But one of them is a Jew, the other one is a Nazi and he's totally committed to his Nazi philosophy and the Jew is just a Jew but he's like really takes pride in being a Jew, okay? But they don't know that about each other because it's never come up at all. They just always play games and hang out and get drunk or whatever. And at some point, the Nazi's like, hey, bro, I want you to come to my family's house. You're such a great friend. And I want you to come over and hang out with everybody. Oh, yeah, great. I can't wait to meet your family. So I'm going to get all dressed up. And he goes there wearing the little Hanukkah hat. And when he enters the house, his Nazi friend is wearing the Nazi symbol on his arm. And at first, there's a confusion. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, it's Joe. Oh, no. And then the truth comes out that that guy is a complete Nazi and this guy is obviously a Jew. Now, all of the times they've had together and all of the uh, good times and all that is going to be a problem because both of them have a value that's very close to their heart. This is their identity is, is, is wrapped around these uh, ideals. And the truth of the matter is if they are going to continue to be a Nazi and a Jew and be loyal to their ideas and their own values, their relationship is going to end right away. And not only that, it's going to end in a devastating way because they've invested so much into each other. This happens in relationships with boyfriends and girlfriends. You fall in love with the way the person looks and the way the person makes you feel, but you don't pay attention to what their personal values are. And you go forward and you have a good time, blah, blah, blah. And at some point, your values come head to head. And their personal values. That was my dog. And their personal values. So, let me give you an example that I do. Okay? Recently, anybody who has written anything religious on Facebook, claiming how blessed they are, that God is nice to them, and God is great to them, and that whatever, any kind, any kind of thing that I've seen on Facebook that points to them being religious and, and them acknowledging that it was God that gave them the life they have, I've immediately unfriended them and that could be you watching. And I'll tell you why. You could have your personal belief and that's great. But that goes directly and 100% against my personal values. And eventually, those people and I are going to have a problem in the future. And I'm going to avoid all of those problems right now. Got it? And that's as simple as it is. So what I do is I unfriend them. Okay? They can keep their ideas. They can keep their values. I expect them to be who they are. But I expect myself to be who I am too. And I'm going to avoid the drama of the future of something coming to a head. And suddenly it's like, well, you know, uh, God, God, God. Great. You believe in it. Take it to yourself. Uh, our values don't meet. You understand how that works? And also, for example, people that work for me. IMC. This is for my staff members. I want 100% of my staff members to think about making an incredible amount of money and I want them to always remember that they themselves are more important than any customer that comes in front of them. I want them to take care of themselves more than the customer. I don't want my staff members sacrificing themselves for their for uh, their students. I don't want my staff members giving everything they have so that they have a shitty life so that other people do well. So I've been telling my staff this and I want all of them to have the goal in their mind of becoming financially filthy rich. You like how the words filthy rich have been put together? Because we could replace that with they can become extremely supremely rich. They can become exotically rich. What I mean is they have to have a lot of money. So, the people that work for me would have to have these values in their mind. And if they don't, they would have to work somewhere else because eventually we're going to come head to head. Okay? And finally, a, a great example of this is the other day somebody had called uh, the Survival Center and Takwaba had picked up the phone and the lady was trying to get to talk to me. She lied 
a bunch of times, and this is what you need to know about cowards, they're liars, right? People that can't just say how they feel, as I'm sitting here telling you my beliefs and my ideas. Other people that can't do that, they're cowards, and they will lie, and they will lie, and they will lie, and they will lie. So she lied three times to try to get me on the phone. He got suspicious. She went from, she wants to sign up, to she has a question about classes, to she wants to know some information about for her son, to actually, I have a complaint, and I want to talk to Arash. And talk Raba, shout out to Taqwa, did the right thing. And he said, I'm sorry, we don't take complaints. And he hung up the phone on her. Now, that value he just demonstrated is the same value I have in my business. I'm not interested in people's complaints about my business. Fuck them. Fuck them. No one's forcing anybody to come and purchase from me. There's a lot of other places. They're welcome to go to it. If they have a fucking complaint, they can go somewhere else. I don't need to hear it from them. So his value and my value match. And because of that, he did the right thing. He told me today, it would happen Friday, and I congratulated him and said, that's why you're going to stick around here. Now, if our values didn't match and he had the value that he should listen to a customer, him and I eventually would have a fucking problem. Okay? So this is the teaching that you need to understand. You have to look it for yourself and see the logic behind it. All right? And this is the logic. If your values don't meet another person's values, you could have a lot of good times together. You could fucking do whatever together. Eventually, you're going to have a major problem with each other. And the more you've invested, the more you're going to lose. Okay? So you could do yourself a goddamn favor and surround yourself with people of similar values. And if a person cannot tell you their values and if they stand for nothing, then that's a problem, isn't it? Because you could never know who they who they really are. There's people on the fence that have they, they don't judge anybody. They, they don't know. How do we know? Those people are some of the craziest people on the fucking planet that can't make a fucking decision about anything. So you can't know their values, can you? And so then you're going forward and their value changes with the times. If someone comes with a little bit more money, now they're with, over there. If somebody comes prettier, now they're that person's values. Girls, you know guys that do that, right? You love golf, he loves golf. You love fucking cheese, he loves cheese. Oh my God, look at the clouds. And, and you go, oh, I love clouds. He goes, I love clouds. I'm always looking at clouds. I'm a cloud watcher. What a fucking pathetic idiot. Okay? So this is your video blog. How many minutes do we got? A little bit over. But I'm at the house right now, so maybe you could meet some of the cast of my life. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> That's Serena. Serena Wiener. Serena Wiener. Say again. Hello. Hi. All right. Well, ha hold on. Hannah. That's Hannah, everybody. She's on a blanket. Raquel. Keep spinning. Whoops. Whoops. It's Felicia. Felicia, are you going to say hi? Okay. <laughs> There's more. I won't be able to see you. Or oh, maybe I will, actually. Electra? That's a great one. Sphinx. Oh. <laughs> Totem. I'm C Nation. Peace.